Hello everyone, if you watched my last video, you saw that I was in preparation to get my implant. This is Dr. Tamisha Dennis and this is The Modern Smile. And now I'm gonna walk you through kind of what happened that day and the actual surgery and the procedure. Obviously, I have a different perspective because I actually um, know what's happening to me as I'm getting my implant done. So let's get to it. I got my prescriptions and I was going through kind of the reason why I needed two implants. I am going to walk you through my surgery day. Once I got to the office, we had already all set up. My dental assistant was there as well. My implant rep, her name is Yumi, and um, Dr. Kang, who was going to be the one doing my implant. And then um, what we did is we just got the room all set up. So here you can see Dr. Kang and Yumi getting all set up. What he's doing is he's actually placing topical. Here's my first implant site. That's the place where it's empty already. We will not be pulling a tooth there. We just have to simply place an implant. You can see my previous implant that I got done 10 years ago when I was in dental school, maybe even longer than that. And the second implant site is gonna be right behind that. He's placing topical on the area. Um, topical is just kind of swabs the area to get the area numb so when you get the shot, it doesn't hurt as much. Is this my topical? Yeah. Oh my lord, it's horrible. <laughs> I'm getting a little excited because I cannot stand topical. Topical makes your whole mouth numb. If you want to know what topical tastes like, topical is similar to putting aura gel or aerosol in your mouth. And I think it's pretty good. Cool. that. I just take the shot. I always say I'll just take the shot because I don't like the topical so much. So here you can see Dr. Kang is numbing me. I was surprised at how much that didn't hurt. He kept saying, telling me to prepare myself for um, the shot and everything. And I was like, please, that doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, in general, I'm not scared of needles, so it really didn't bother me. When we do a dental implant, we don't give what we call an inferior avenue of block. You can see me giving a thumbs up there because it didn't hurt. But um, we numb around the area, so like by the area of the cheek, on the inside near the tongue, on the top, because all we have to numb is your gums and your bone. We're not numbing a tooth. And because we're not numbing a tooth, you actually get numb pretty easily. But I tell them the goal is not to get you so crazy numb. We kind of want to know if we're in the vicinity of an area that we shouldn't be in. There's all kinds of measurements so we can see where your nerves are. So now, by now I'm getting numb. You can see Dr. Kang is sitting down, getting red to work. Pretty much you get numb right away. Um, in this first thing, he's just kind of touching the bone with his fingers and feeling around. Remember, this is a place where there's no tooth to pull. A little suctioning. Now, here mm -hmm. you can see he has what we call a 15 blade and he's starting to cut into the bone. In dentistry, we call that a flap. So we make, basically, if you can imagine, a square in the bone. So we block out the area of where the implant is gonna go, and we make that square, and then we peel the gums back in order to expose the bone, in order to place the implant into the bone. Again, I'm in zero pain. Um, at most at this point, sometimes you'll feel pressure, but that's just the pressure of pushing down because you know somebody's in your mouth. Now you're gonna see he's taking a different instrument. This looks like a curette to me. Um, and he's just kind of peel the gums back on that square. A little bit blood there. And the assistant, she's just kind of suctioning as you go. And they kind of just like, um, I would say core the area to kind of Get the gums loose enough okay. to push it over. Oh, yeah. And you can see that nice little flap. It's kind of weird seeing it on this end because I do this to people all the time. And seeing it like done, of course, obviously when I was having my implant done, I could feel but I couldn't see. And if you look through the reflection of the mirror, you can see kind of my flap raised there. Not in pain, not in pain at all. Kind of hollow. 
<laughs> I'm just saying that I'm trying to follow because I like to like know what's going on and I can visualize the whole thing. Right now he has what we call a periodontal probe and the periodontal probe is just showing like so there's concavities or depressions in the bone and he's just feeling the bone out. Now this first is we call it a rounder and he's just going to mark the spot of where the implant is going to go. So um, just positioning wise, remember this is a molar tooth so it's a bigger tooth so he just marks this is where I want to put the implant and then just puts a little divot into the um, the spot of where the implant's going to go. And the water that you see there is actually saline water. We have saline bags. He's using all of my tools and instruments that I use in my office. And it's a saline bag so the water is sterile. It's not coming out of our regular machines um, that we have. So we want to keep the area as sterile and clean as possible. So um, he's doing it again with the slow with the round bird just to mark the spot. I think he likes where he is and he's gonna continue in that spot. During implants, actually we can make adjustments depending on where we are and say, you know what, I don't like it there, I'm gonna go somewhere else. You can actually see the little hole there if you look closely through the mirror. Beautiful. He's feeling the bone out again, just to make sure he likes where he is. And he's just gonna go into that same spot again. Now, the next part is what we call the beginning of what we call an osteotomy. An osteotomy means that the bone, we're gonna create a hole, osteum is the bone or the root word of bone, and we're gonna create a successive amount of drills that get sometimes deeper as well as longer so we increase the length as well as the diameter until we reach the final so you see that first gold one there it's a certain length I think that's a 10 millimeter um, length so length 10 millimeter and the width that one um, the first one was 1.8 millimeters the next one is 2.2 millimeters if you've ever seen what that much <laughs> millimeter looks like it's really tiny so this next part I think I was feeling it a little bit so he just gave me a little bit of anesthesia I have to say the anesthesia tastes disgusting it's bitter bitter I always tell my patients like similar to taking an aspirin and crushing it so then he did that two millimeter bill uh, drill I'm sorry and then he puts it into my mouth and we take an x-ray and that x-ray is just gonna show where are we do we like where we are you can see where the nerve we have plenty of room and he's going to continue to use bigger and bigger drill bits, um, mostly wider, not necessarily longer, until we get the circle or the diameter of how wide the final implant is going to be. So we call that x-ray that I just took um, our midpoint. So he's doing another one. And at this point, what you're feeling is vibration. So you'll feel like a little, I mean, honestly, not that much. The implant is going in now. So if you saw really quickly, the implant sits on the end of that drill. It's great, it's sterile. We try to take it out and put it in as soon as possible. So it goes in pretty quick. And then we turn that on and we round it really slow until it gets into the bone. So if you look really closely, you can see the side of it and it goes really slow. So initially when we're drilling, we're going like at 1200 RPMs. Um, and now, rotations per minute, um, and now this is doing like 35, so super, super, super slow. We're guiding the implant into place. And that beep is the machine telling us that we've reached a certain torque. Torque is cool. how much work it takes the implant. Now this is our torque wrench. I know I don't like the word wrench. Nobody likes the word wrench. But we actually use the torque wrench to wound the implant down the last bit of space. So we get it pretty close. We want it a little bit below the bone. So we'll kind of wound the rest of it until it goes down into place. Um, and then we, so we make a couple turns. That, that instrument actually, you can flip it on the other side and it goes out and in. Here, you can see the implant in place, looks great. And now he's putting what we call a healing cap on, which is the top part of the implant that you see that silver shiny thing. I paused it right there so you can see it. Um, all right, here's a part with the bone. So the bone is going in, he's packing it. 
Um, in my previous video, I did talk about how there's different kinds of bone graft, okay. and this bone graft is a okay. synthetic bone graft, and he's gonna pack it into place, okay. tuck it around the implant to encourage, we call it osteogenic. That means that it's going to encourage bone growth around the implant so that it can osteointegrate. Custom. So now you're gonna see him placing some sutures. So we're gonna stitch everything up. It's called polyglycolic acid and it's not You need this in the video? Suture. So here we have the tooth that's gonna get pulled. This is the one I was talking about in the previous video that was causing me pain with biting. So there's the tooth right there. Now he's gonna do the same thing. Now, so he's gonna do a flap right around the gum. The difference between this one is what we call an immediate dental implant. That means tooth comes out, implant goes in the same day. The other implant is traditional implant, empty spot, you place the implant. This implant is, there's a tooth that we need to pull before we actually place the implant. So he's doing the same concept. He's gonna raise a flap around my tooth. So you can see he's going around the tooth to raise a flap. And then after he raises the flap, the goal is to see the bone on both sides, the buckle bone. If you watch any of my dentistry decoded, you'll know that the outside bone is called the buckle bone. It's really important. So we really take our time taking this tooth out without, we call it a traumatic extraction, meaning we really don't wanna break our existing bone. Even though there is, even though there is artificial bone, your natural bone is better than anything that anybody could ever make. So here he is raising the flap. Again, I'm in no pain at all. The crazy thing is that you look at this tooth and you really don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, it's really about how I feel. I didn't have an abscess or an infection, but boy, did that tooth hurt when I bite. This next part you're gonna see is really, um, he's using what we call an elevator, small elevator. And so he goes between the tooth on the front side of the tooth and sees if he can lift or prop the tooth up and out. So he's trying to see if he could get a little wiggle. If you saw the x-ray that I showed a little minute ago, my roots are really long and wide. They sit like this. So the likelihood of him getting both of those roots out at the same time, super, super low, not very good. I have very strong bone. When I had my implant done 10 years ago, he had a really hard time taking it out. So I wasn't really surprised that this extraction was not an easy one. If you can see here, he's splitting the tooth in two pieces. And um, before we got started, I told him that I don't get numb easy, but I felt sick. So all of this water is splashing around, and he's going to split the tooth, the tooth in two pieces and see if he could get each one, the front root, we call that the mesial root, and the back root, the distal root, out separately. So now he's prying between the two teeth to kind of pop them apart and then see if he can lift those two out. At this point, still not in any pain. Um, I think he was more worried about me than I was about myself. And um, he's just kind of lifting to see if he can get both roots out. Um, it does take a little um, power or hand power. It's not really upper body muscles. It's more technique and fingers. I tell my patients all the time, Dr. King is very gentle, but I tell my patients all the time that trying to muscle a tooth out doesn't work. All you're gonna do end up is breaking it. So it's really about your my patients like to joke with me and say, Dr. Dennis, are you strong enough to take this tooth out? I'm like, I don't use this even though I work out. <laughs> I don't use this, I use this. So he's trying to get that tooth out, trying to pry it apart. Not in any pain or discomfort at all. Interesting, oh, so the top part of that tooth broke off. That is not the whole thing. Um, so remember, two pieces, one front piece, one back piece. The top piece broke off. Um, Dr. King was a little frustrated with my, my tooth, I think, in his mind. He thought it was going to go a lot faster. But in my mind, because I knew what my previous experience is, it didn't really surprise me at all. Now we can see a forceps. This instrument has a bad reputation for, for looking as, like super scary. The reality is I'm clenching my eyes just because, but I'm not in any pain. All you feel is your head getting tossed back and forth. He's trying to see if he can loosen that tooth. Again, it's really difficult to force a tooth out, but you have to loosen it from what we call the periodontal ligament to see 
if we could get it kind of more loose. She's going back, changing some instruments up, still trying to get this tooth out. Come on, little guy, let's get out of there. Broke again. <laughs> So he's drilling in between again to see if we can get the rest of the pieces out. So at this point, because so many pieces of the tooth had broken off, we decided to take an x-ray and to see how much of the tooth was left. And if you look on the front, you can actually trace the emptiness of the tooth and you can see there's a little piece towards the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sneak that, peek. Look at I can't see look anything. At that look at that. I can't see anything. Here's the root. So now we're going to get that last little piece that we've been kind of struggling to get out for probably an hour. The first implant probably took 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes at most. And this second implant, just taking the tooth out, took a good solid hour just to take the tooth out. Oh, so here's our mid-op. So this is just like the other one. Then, oh, we're starting the osteotomy on this side. Took, okay, so there it is. So here's my final implant. We kind of fast forward through that part and you can see the healing abutment and the implant. You can actually see the faded areas.